Raoul's law was developed by an awesome named French guy named Francois-Marie Raoul. And what it does is it explains how adding a solute to a solution can change the vapor pressure. There are two forms of it. One involves a non-volatile solute and the other involves a volatile solute. And the difference between these is that non-volatile solutes are ones that don't contribute their own vapor pressure. And often that can mean that they just have such a significant difference in boiling points that the vapor pressure contributed by the solute is negligible. Or in other cases, it just does not contribute a vapor pressure whatsoever. And the non-volatile solute form of Raoul's law says that the vapor pressure equals the mole fraction of solvent times the vapor pressure that would exist over pure solvent at that temperature. And so let's just say that we have a, a solution that is 90% solvent and 10% non-volatile solute. That would have the effect of reducing the vapor pressure over that solution by 10% from what it would be if it was pure solvent. And so here we can see it graphed. If we have 100% solvent or a mole fraction of one, it's going to have the vapor pressure equal to the vapor pressure of pure solvent. Whereas if we move to let's say 50% where its mole fraction is 0.5 and it has a solute that is also 0.5 mole fraction, then the vapor pressure over that would be half of that. And so it would have the effect of reducing the vapor pressure overall because you're adding components that don't contribute any vapor pressure and thus you're seeing a lower vapor pressure than you would with a pure solvent. Now when you're dealing with volatile solutes then you use a different form of Raoul's law and the way that this works is that you have to consider the mole fraction of component A times the vapor pressure that would exist over pure component A and then you add to that the mole fraction of component B and multiply that by the vapor pressure that it would exist over pure B. And so what that means is that each of these components is contributing to the vapor pressure and its contribution is relative to the mole fraction. So this can be plotted in this way. If you have a volatile solute, you have somewhere between the vapor pressure over pure A and the vapor pressure over pure B. If you set it up so that the x-axis is at the very left it's a mole fraction of one of A and a mole fraction of zero of B then what you'll see is that the vapor pressure will equal the pressure that you'd find over pure A. That makes sense because pure A if you have that it will have its normal vapor pressure. If you have pure B so its mole fraction is one whereas the mole fraction of A is zero then it will have the vapor pressure you would expect of pure B. But if you're somewhere in between, then you'll have a moderate vapor pressure that is somewhere in between A's normal pressure and B's normal pressure at that given temperature. Realize that this is always at a given temperature. So if you're 50% A and 50% B, then what you'll find is the vapor pressure will be in the middle of what you'd expect if you had pure A or pure B. If you're far closer to A, let's say the mole fraction of A is 0.9 and the mole fraction of B is going to be 0.1 over here, then what you'll see is that the overall vapor pressure will be closer to A, but there will still be a little contribution made by the vapor pressure of B. And so if you just know this formula, you should be able to solve any questions based on that. And they'll usually give you values because you can't be expected to remember what a pure vapor pressure would be over something. But Raoul's law is very important because it looks at the effect that a solute has on changing the vapor pressure over a solution. And the solute, if it's non-volatile, does nothing except lower the overall vapor pressure. And this is very similar to what happens in boiling point elevation. If the solute is volatile, then it contributes its own part to this, and you have to do some calculations in order to figure out what the overall vapor pressure over your solution will be.
Once you understand that, the only other thing to consider is potential deviations to Raoul's law that are caused by the process of dissolving itself. And so we'll go into an example of that and then we'll have covered all of the colligative properties. Raoul's law is a very, very good guideline for understanding what happens to vapor pressure, particularly when you have two volatile solutes that are mixed together with each other. However, every once in a while you'll encounter a question that considers how the process of dissolving influences Raoul's law. And what you'll see is a slight deviation in the positive or negative direction. So it will deviate slightly from Raoul's law because of the dissolving process. The process of solvation involves three different steps. The first step is that you have to break the intermolecular forces or the bonds between solute particles with other solute particles. Then you have to break the bonds between the solvent and other solvent particles. Both of those are going to be endothermic and require energy because whenever you break interactions it requires energy. So these two steps will be endothermic. The third step in dissolving something is when you form new bonds between the solute particles and the solvent particles. And because you're forming new bonds or intermolecular interactions, forming those tends to be exothermic and quite favorable. It has a negative delta H, a negative change in enthalpy. So you can come up with quantity known as delta H of solution, the enthalpy of solution or the enthalpy of solvation, which is the sum of the enthalpies of each of these three steps, breaking the solute-solute interactions, breaking the solvent-solvent interactions, and forming new intermolecular bonds or intermolecular interactions between the solute and the solvent. The general rule is that favorable dissolving processes have a negative delta H of solution. They are exothermic in general. And ones that are unfavorable tend to be endothermic in general. And this relates to Raoul's law because if you have a positive delta H of solution and the particles have a choice of whether they want to exist in that thin layer of vapor above the surface of the liquid or if they want to enter the liquid phase, if it's not energetically favorable, meaning that it's a positive delta H of solution and it's an endothermic process that requires energy, that tells you that it's not that favorable for those gas particles at the vapor pressure surface, it's not favorable for them to then re-enter the liquid phase. And what that means is that if you have a positive delta H of solution, it's not favorable for those particles at the surface to become liquid, and instead it's favorable for them to stay in the gas phase. And if they want to stay in the gas phase, that means that your vapor pressure is going to be a little bit greater than you would expect based on a pure Raoul's law calculation. So if it's not favorable for these particles to dissolve, then they're not going to dissolve. They're going to stay as gas particles right above the surface of that liquid. And what that means is that you have a slight positive deviation in vapor pressure of your solution that contains both component A and component B. More particles will stay at that surface and stay in the gas phase, thus the vapor pressure goes up. Now if it's overall exothermic, if this payoff step where you form new solute-solvent interactions is so exothermic that the overall heat of solution is exothermic and it's very favorable for that thing to dissolve, then what you'll find is that it's more favorable for it to dissolve and so a lot of those gas particles at the surface will have no problem entering the liquid phase. And if those gas particles that are creating the vapor pressure above your surface, if those would prefer to be in the liquid phase, then what you'll see is that they spend more time in that liquid phase and thus there are fewer gas particles here and thus the vapor pressure will be lower as a result. It's so favorable for them to be dissolved that they'd prefer to be dissolved rather than exist in that gas phase. And because of that, the vapor pressure 
will be lower. And so this is a fairly advanced topic with Raoul's law, but it is something that you'll see occasionally because the solvation process tells you whether those gas particles that are part of the vapor pressure, whether they are comfortable entering a liquid environment or if they'd prefer to remain as a gas. And then that causes consequent changes in the vapor pressure, which can influence things like the boiling point of a particular solution. And so this is the last component of colligative properties. We've gone over boiling point elevation, which is caused by the reduced number of particles at the surface that want to enter into the gas phase. And because they can't enter the gas phase due to the interference there, you'll see a lower overall vapor pressure at any given temperature. And thus, it will take a greater temperature for something to boil. We've talked about freezing point depression, which is where the dissolved particles get in the way of those lattice structures that are necessary to form in order for a solid to exist. We've gone over osmotic pressure, which is based on the desire of water to move across a semi-permeable membrane in order to neutralize concentrations. And sometimes that osmotic pressure is great enough to offset hydrostatic pressure differences which are simply the desire of water to move the other way due to greater columns above them and greater pressure overall. And then we've talked about the various versions of Raoul's law. With a non-volatile solute, one that doesn't have its own vapor pressure, you're simply looking at how much of this solution is the solvent. And that mole fraction there will tell you what percent or what fraction of the vapor pressure of pure solvent that you'll be seeing. And so this graph illustrates that. If you're at 98% solvent, then the vapor pressure will be very close to the pure solvent. Whereas if you're at mostly solute, then it will go the other way. And then with volatile solutes, ones that do contribute their own vapor pressure, then Raoul's law allows you to look at the contribution to vapor pressure provided by one piece sol solute A and the other piece, which is solute B, or you could consider that the solvent. And so you see an interaction there where depending on the mole fractions of these two pieces, it will either favor something that's closer to the vapor pressure over pure A, or something that's closer to the vapor pressure over pure B. And the final thing is that if the dissolving process is endothermic, that favors these gas particles at the surface not dissolving, and thus they stay in the gas phase, they stay in that vapor pressure layer that is above the solution, and that will cause a general increase in vapor pressure because these things would rather be in the gas phase than in the dissolved liquid phase. And if you have an exothermic, very favorable delta H of solution, all of those gas particles at the surface will prefer to be in the liquid phase, and so you'll see a lower vapor pressure than you would otherwise predict according to Raoul's law. And so these are all of the major colligative properties to be aware of and never ever forget that the Van't Hoff factor plays a big role and so you have to consider not just how many solute particles you have but how many dissolved particles those solute particles will create when they're placed in solution.